What up my peeps? I am the ruckus and these are my toys. Up next and on deck. You see it, you see what it is. We've got another dinosaur review. This is another dinosaur model from PNSO. They are a company out of China. They specialize in realistic animal models, both prehistoric and modern slash current. This figure right here is Olera Titan. Uh, it's officially called Ivan the Olera Titan. PNSO is uh, known, they're fond of giving their their animals, their figurines uh, names. This one, uh, Ivan. And as you see, it's uh, number 53 in the line. They also have a, um, a museum line. So they have more than 53 figures, more than 53 prehistoric animal models. They also have um, several models from their um, from their museum line, um, and uh, that line is impressive too. It's a 135 uh, scale, so they try to um, match up the animals. Um, as closely to scale with one another as possible. It uh, doesn't work all the time. Sometimes I think they uh, forget, but they still list as 135 scale. Um, later when I get to some comparisons, you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, so we've got Ivan, the uh, the Ulrich Titan. And uh, yeah, you're looking at the box, you see what it is. It's got a, uh, a picture of Ivan on the front, you see it's it reads PNSO Prehistoric Animal Models that accompany your growth. Uh, number 53, Ivan the Olera Titan. Uh, they give them names, I think, because they do want to um, cater to children, even though these, these uh, models are uh, higher end and uh, they do cost not like um, if you go into Target and Go into the toy section and find dinos, and uh, they won't be um, around. They won't be near the prices of uh, these models. Anyhow, enough about the financial aspect of it. Uh, you see that it shows the same thing on the other side. On the side, you see what it's got there. New Aesthetic Education, PNSO, Dream and Vision for Children. As I stated, they try to cater to children even though, you know, the average child, the parent isn't going to break them off with, with these models. On top, you have Ivan the Old Titan again. Every life deserves respect. That's what it says right there. And, uh, yeah, that's about the size of it. So, uh, next up, let's get Ivan out of the box and see what he looks like in person. Ivan the Olera Titan comes with this booklet that's included and um, it's filled with all kinds of things, photos and stuff like that. You see you got your table of contents there. I am Ivan the Olera Titan. You see some beautiful artwork and like I said they specialize in um, making these uh, models look as realistic as possible. I mean that uh, that just looks that, that looks incredible. You have um, literature, and uh, like I said, they uh, they try to cater to children. This is like little bios or what uh, you know. Um, the uh, the subject in question, in this case, Ivan has a little read up. It's like he's talking to the children. I am Ivan over a Titan, a hadrosaurid dinosaur that spends its entire life pursuing elegance, etc., etc., etc more more artwork this is showing how uh, the, how they are uh, how they move the locomotion this right here is just basically the uh, older Titan is rearing up because hadrosaurs which is uh, the family of dinosaurs that over Titan belongs to they were um, quadrupedal in other words they walked on four legs and uh, but they were capable of rearing up so that's what that's trying to demonstrate. You've got more artwork and uh, it just goes on and on. It's just cool. They show different angles, what have you. You can just continue on. This right here is an illustration. This isn't the uh, actual model. 
uh, as you can see, the model is actually posed rearing up, but it keeps going. There's all kinds of uh, info and things of that nature in this booklet. Also included is this poster of an Olera Titan in its natural habitat. Um, yeah, they, they give you, uh, PNSO gives you uh, a lot of um, um, extras and uh, with the artwork and stuff, pretty nice. Ivan also comes with a stand. PNSO usually includes stands with their bipedal uh, dinosaurs to help keep them stable. Uh, they tend to, uh, they'll stand well pretty much on their own in the beginning, but over time gravity takes effect and they are front heavy and uh, it ends up making them um, fall down, especially when it's warm. Uh, I usually have problems and I'm sure uh, most of you collectors uh, know what I'm talking about when um, the summertime comes and it gets hot the plastic from your figures they get soft and um, we have more uh, accidents and fall downs in the summertime than um, the rest of the year uh, but uh, we all know what's up with that anyway with the stand you just uh, st uh, just uh, peg peg the uh, the actual stand into the base and voila you've got the stand so here we have Ivan the older Titan I um, set him up with a little little backdrop there to make it seem uh, a little more natural a little more natural anyhow a little uh, a little background on older Titan older Titan is a, uh, a species of hadrosaurid or duck bill dinosaur of course because their uh, their snouts were in the shape of uh, duck bills and uh, Ultra Titan is part of a uh, subgenus known as uh, Lambiosaurs Lambiosaurs were uh, duck bill dinosaurs that uh, they had crests atop their heads and um, usually kind of flashy and uh, a lot of times with uh, some hadrosaurs, they, uh, the crests were actually like um, part of their nasal structure. It's been theorized by some scientists that uh, some, they could uh, possibly uh, either by inhaling or exhaling, you know, um, could actually make noises like, you know, for lack of a better term, trumpeting kind of noises. And, uh, this is, uh, like I said, it's just a theory, but, um, and we'll, we'll have no way of knowing. But anyhow, this is Ulrich Titan, and you see uh, he's got a crest above his head. We'll inspect the crest uh, in depth shortly. A little bit more about Ulrich Titan. Ulrich Titan was considered a large hadrosaur. Um, it was uh, 26 feet long, considered large, even though there were hadrosaurs that... Uh, got up to, uh, well, shoot, there were some that actually got up to 50 feet long, believe it or not, um, which is essentially twice the size of Ulrich Titan, but they can they consider it a large area, so I, I consider it a, a mid-sized one at 26 feet, considering that there are species of hadrosaurs that are 30, uh, 35, 40 feet, and of course, like I said, 50 feet, that 50 foot uh, size belongs to um, the owner of the, the name for uh, these uh, this genus of dinosaur, the Lambiosaurs themselves, got to about 50 feet long. They were pretty big, pretty big. That's a bucket list item of mine. Um, I've never seen a Lambiosaur skeleton, so uh, maybe one day. Anyhow, uh, Ulra Titan lived 75 to 66 million years ago, so it was one of the last dinosaurs. It was around for the Great Extinction and uh, it was located in far eastern Russia. So yep, even Russia had dinos. Anyhow, uh, let's, uh, let's get uh, Ivan up a little bit closer. Okay, we've got Ivan up close and personal. And as you can see, you see the crest that I was uh, speaking of and um, 
they all uh, the the uh, all the lambiosaurs they had uh, unique crests, you know, basically um, isolated to their species. And um, as you can see here, PNSO has uh, painted it to be kind of bright, so which makes sense. They named this model uh, Ivan, meaning it's male, and uh, usually. Um, birds which are dinosaurs by the way if you didn't know that birds and uh, reptiles as well uh, the males of the species are usually the more colorful they use their colors to uh, attract females and um, depending on um, the nature of the colorful part of their bodies frills, crests, whatever sometimes they're also used to intimidate other males uh, for territory and uh, also, you know, competing for females. But anyway, looking at this head sculpt, it looks very nice. You can see um, how brightly colored they, uh, PNSO, I mean, has painted the uh, the crest. You can also see, uh, I want to try to get close up so you can take a, uh, a look at the eye and see how... Uh, how that's painted, how realistic the eye has been painted. And uh, you see that uh, the snout is like a brown and then as it as it washes down to the, uh, the lower part of the skull, it gets lighter. And uh, you look under the neck, Penaso is excellent at attention to detail. You see it even has a, they even have the throat area sculpted nice you can see wrinkles in the skin as it's turning its head to the left and uh, yeah it's just uh, it's just uh, it's nice how uh, PNSO uh, they really attack that attention to detail they have been criticized for their drab color schemes when it comes to their dinosaurs usually like a brown or uh, drab green or something like that nothing colorful they have done done it a few times I personally don't mind it I think it's more realistic than something colorful because something colorful especially if it's a herbivore is just attracting attention to itself and uh, you know and uh, well you know I said especially herbivore but you know that I think that actually goes double for carnivores they'll be seen they won't be able to catch anything so anyhow Enough with that, going down further, looking at the forearms, you see the uh, how the, the paint has uh, darkened up there. Uh, if you look at the fingers, if you will, they, uh, they end in hooves. Like I said, these animals were uh, quadrupedal, meaning they walked on uh, all fours and could rear up. You see it's got a dew claw back there. That means there's a claw that sits above never hitting the ground as you can see that going down you see it's got uh, very uh, smooth scalation and it uh, the color work uh, transitions as it goes down towards the belly you can still see more wrinkles looking at the hind limb you see you still see that uh, that same color and it, uh, you can you can see there's a uh, a texture there that's supposed to be the scales, looking pretty smooth there. You could see as the leg, uh, this left leg is uh, pulling forward. You see the skin stretching right there, looking pretty cool. Go down. You see the uh, the three. Oh, I got out of frame there. My bad. You see the three toed feet there. And then going down towards the tail, you see how it's got that striping as it tapers down. Taking a look at his back, the scales along his spine. You can see the detail that PNSO put into that as it tapers down the tail all the way to the tip. Looking at the other side, more of the same, very consistent with the striping and uh, 
the right leg that is uh, being um, pushed off on. You can see the, uh, the musculature right there looking pretty good. But once again, the, the way how the browns, they, they melt into this, this uh, tannish, this beige tan. And you see here, the skin being pulled. Once again, more attention to detail by PNSO. Looking at the underbelly real quick. This is attention to detail. They included a cloaca, which is the poop shoot, basically. And uh, once again, you see the, uh, the stretching of the skin there with the neck. And uh, speaking of the neck, you see how long the neck is. One thing I didn't mention is that Ulrich Titan, uh, which the name Ulrich Titan stands for Titanic Swan. And uh, it got that name because uh, one of the things that, that distinguishes this species of hadrosaur is it had a longer neck than most. Um, not to get too into anatomy here, but hadrosaurs are known for having 15 vertebrae in the neck and older titan had 18 so that's where it gets its name from but uh, as you can see they uh, they stayed pretty accurate with uh, giving Ivan a long neck and uh, giving him a having him rear up bipedal stance as you can see utilizing the stand that came with Ivan you just basically, it's really more for bracing. You put, you just you try to find the sweet spot and place it under there. And what will end up happening, a lot of people don't display them with the stands. I actually do. I've got them. The main reason I display them with my stands is so I don't lose them. But they do help in most cases. There are some cases where the dinosaurs still manage to fall over, but hey, it is what it is. I'll take that dilemma. But um, yeah, so that is Ivan. That's that's how you uh, utilize the stand. What I failed to mention earlier was uh, I did mention that uh, obviously Ivan is in a bipedal stance. He's reared up. What I failed to mention is that in order for PNSO to achieve this stance they've got Ivan's tail touching the ground. Now, anyone who isn't in the know when it comes to dinosaur models and figurines, um, actual collectors of these, uh, of these models frown upon the tails hitting the ground while it's referred to as the tripod stance. Uh, we would prefer that um, the animal stood on its own two feet, no pun intended. But um, obviously, in order to achieve certain poses, you got to do what you got to do. So it is what it is. Um, I'm one of the ones that frown upon it, but I don't complain and whine about it because um, I understand uh, a lot of times why it happens. Um, they have managed to, you know, on, uh, when it comes to their theropods, meat-eating dinosaurs, to achieve this without the tails hitting the ground. But uh, that's another story. Anyway, what we're going to do now is uh, bring in some family members of Ivan, uh, starting with this guy right here. This is the Lambiosaurus that I spoke of. This is the uh, this is the species that this uh, subspecies is named for, and. Uh, as you can see, if I try to uh, get him lined up, uh, as I stated earlier, Lambiosaurs were uh, larger than Ulrich Titan. This one, if uh, Ulrich Titan was on all fours, this Lambiosaur would still be a little bit longer. This uh, this is what I was talking about earlier with PNSO. Sometimes they, uh, they just don't uh, get the scale right, even though they'll have it shown on their boxes on the packaging that it's 135th uh, scale and uh, still technically is 135th scale this uh, Lambiosaur just has to be posed as a, like a sub adult because this critter um, should be uh, if they were going to be accurate with its size it would be about twice the size of the older Titan 
because Lambiosaurs, were, um, they could grow up to 50 feet long. And uh, to give you an idea about how they'll be all over the place with their scaling, I'm going to bring in another dinosaur as I take away the Lambiosaur. And uh, I'm going to bring in a Corythosaurus. This right here is, uh, you may not want to stand, but uh, I'll just, uh, let's see if I lean him up against the rock there. Yes, as you can see, he's just dwarfing the old red titan as I got him uh, posed there. I'm going to try to, uh, hopefully I won't knock him over if I do, forgive me, but I'm going to try to move Ivan in front of the Corythosaur. And you see how large the Corythosaurus is. This is totally wrong. If anything, this should have been the size of the Lambiosaur. Corythosaurus were um, around the same size as Ultra Titan. Uh, actually, a little bit bigger. They're around 30 feet long. But as you can see, they've got it all over the place. And then you see the, the coloration uh, that I spoke of before. This is one of the few times PNSO um, used bright colors. The funny thing is they used this bright yellow and brown and still managed to make it kind of drab, but that's the Corythosaur. And uh, we've got one more and we're going to uh, now pose him with a Parasaurolophus. And uh, this dinosaur is definitely uh, known. It's been seen in Jurassic Park. Let me move. Let me move Ivan out the way so you can see what I'm talking about. In fact, let me turn him around. And then I can put Ivan in front of him. So there you go. That's a Parasaurolophus. As you can see, you see it also has that, uh, it's got its own unique headdress right there. And um, they used to believe, uh, back in the day, scientists used to believe that um, dinosaurs such as Parasaurolophus and Corythosaurus, they used, their crests were like um, air tanks. They breathe in and uh, hold air there so that they can, um, you know, stay underwater extended periods of time. And um, I believe they've long since abandoned that theory. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, an Ulrich Titan uh, next to a uh, Parasaurolophus, which, by the way, I think the Parasaurolophus is, uh, yeah, the Parasaurolophus is more or less to scale. If we're going to say that the Ulrich Titan is 26 feet, then uh, the Parasaurolophus looks to be about uh, 30 feet long. Um, and uh, I think I did not mention that uh, Ulrich Titans were about five and a half tons too, whereas uh, Parasaurolophus was like about six, almost seven tons. So to sum it all up, Ivan the Ulrich Titan by PNSO is a, uh, for me, a wonderful addition to my PNSO collection. Like I said, uh, they specialize in making very lifelike and realistic dinosaur models, animal models, period. The, uh, I love the, uh, the paint, especially on the crest, how bright it is, how lifelike the eyes appear. I love the rearing up stance, even though they had to achieve this by making the animal uh, a tripod. It is what it is. Uh, you see how I've got him posed on this, uh, this uh, mountaintop uh, with the tail hidden by uh, the uh, the fauna there, the flora, I should say, and uh, you can't tell that it's actually on the ground. And um, I, uh, like I said, I love the paint. I love how the brown just uh, melts into the lighter colors. It uh, actually melts into like uh, two different colors. Uh, it uh, gets a lighter brown, and then it goes into like a, uh, a pale tan for the underbelly and the undersides of the legs, the uh, accuracy with the, uh, the, the hooves for the forearms, the forelimbs, and the three, the three clawed toes for the, uh, for the rear, the hooves on the limbs. 
of the front limbs, um, excellent. The paint, the striping of the tail, just uh, just uh, just an excellent figure, uh, pretty much in scale. I am very uh, very happy to uh, to add this dinosaur to my collection. Um, my problem is I just don't know where I'm going to put them. I've got uh, all my spaces uh, filled up with uh, with action figures, but it's a nice dilemma to have. And uh, another dilemma is I've got to end this video sometime, so it may as well be now because it's probably already running along. I guess I'll see when I do the editing, huh? Anyway, any of you that have hung around this long with me, thank you for rocking with me. And uh, please spread the word. I'm trying to... Uh, Still trying to get to that 100. It's amazing how everybody talks about getting to 1,000, 5,000, 100,000, and I'm still trying to get to 100. Um, so yeah, help a brother out. Hit the uh, the share button, or rather share. Hit the uh, the subscribe button and the like button is what I should be saying. Um, and smash the bell so you can be notified when I upload another video. Once again, thanks guys for rocking with me. Until the next time my peeps remember, the hunt continues. And I'm out. Peace.